right, hey, how are you? Greg Pacheco, Extreme Ministries. Ready to crank another one up. Uh, cranking up a message for Jesus. Okay. Uh, people, uh, it's funny. People, uh, I'm speaking to Christians now. Speaking uh, speaking of people of the world, we know what that means. If you're, if you're not really a, uh, uh, much of a believer, um, what that means is people who aren't a... Who don't know Christ personally okay well I'm speaking from the, a perspective that knows him personally okay and, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna speak about Christ and um, some just incredible things about him okay uh, we know that the word became flesh all right I just heard that I, I've heard that a million times okay I just heard it on a song and it just it just it just it just, it just um, it was like a new revelation again uh, Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 that everything he has learned has been by revelation from Jesus Christ. So what you know, I know, what anyone else knows, yeah, they may have been taught by someone this or that or the other, read the Bible, but it's been Jesus who reveals it to them. John 6, 63, his, his flesh profits nothing, it's the spirit that quickens the body. These words I speak to you are spirit and life. The words he speaks to us are spirit and life. Whether you get that to a person, the Bible, however, there's spirit and life. Jesus reveals it to you. Okay? So the Word became flesh. But what is the Word? The Word is the Word that spoke the universe into existence. The Word that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. Now has become flesh. Years later, 2,000 years back plus for us. He, he, he became flesh, okay? The spoken word of God, who Jesus himself said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Literally, it's like the Father, Son, Holy Spirit walking on earth as one. I know it's tough to get our minds around that. The Father sent the Son, the Son walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, but yet they were all one. When you saw Jesus, you saw the Father. You saw the Holy Spirit. They, they operate as one. Okay, he calls us one. Okay, wait. Heirs of Christ. Heirs of Christ. And um, we have the same privilege as, as an adopted child has the same privilege as the actual child. Okay, we do as the son, as children of God. It's the same as Jesus. Okay, we need to know our identity in Christ, who we are, his child. Well, anyway, I was listening to a couple songs, and uh, one was Face Down by Matt Redman. And, of course, I think of the 24 elders. That circles the throne in Revelation 4. And there's four living creatures with, with six wings with eyes on both sides. It's like, so no matter what angle they're at, they won't miss a glimpse of the Lord. His majesty and his beauty. And, and from uh, Corey Russell from IHOP in Kansas, International House of Prayer, says this. Says that those six wings and those eyes are so, no matter what angle they're at, They'll always catch his beauty. And every time they see him, it's like they'd never seen him before. That's what Corey Russell was saying. It was awesome. So they just cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is and who was and is to come. It's like they'd never seen him before. Every time they look at him, they're just captivated by his beauty. And every time they cry out and say that, holy, 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 the 24 elders fall face down before the Lamb, before Jesus, before the Father the Holy Spirit. He's awesome. Okay? They fall face down, drop their crowns, whatever they gain, um, you know, whatever's valuable to them, whatever we gain on this earth for heaven, for the glory of God, we're going to lay it down at His feet because He gave us the power to do it. He created us in our mother's womb and um, He's worthy of everything. So He's absolutely awesome. Now He talks, He tells us to, to get rid of any sin that easily entangles us. Okay? Uh, personally, you know, I, I've had some struggles um, with, with with sin, and um, you know, as we all we, as we all do, if it's not one thing, it's another. You know, it could be food addiction, could be whatever. Um, you know, and, I, and I've tried to repent. I've done pretty well. Uh, you know, I fell again recently, but back up again. You know, a righteous man falls seven times a day, but gets back up again. The Bible says, and you're only righteous because of your faith in Christ, anyway. Your own righteousness is as filthy as rags. It's garbage. Okay, so we get back up again. Isaiah 53. We're cleansed by his blood. 
as though we were a scholar, we're as white as snow. He purifies us, and bang, we, he, he, um, 1 John 1, 9, he, he purifies us from all unrighteousness. Um, it's like he talks about how we're sanctified and, and um, um, justified. It's like justify having even sinned. It's just, it's just beautiful, and uh, how he how he forgives us like that. He's he's just so good. Um. So anyway, I just want to talk a little bit about the face down thing because because God is, he's just worthy. He's just worthy. I try. I've been spending a little bit more time on my knees before him lately. He's just worthy of that reverence and respect. He's awesome. Praise him. But anyway, I want to continue on with Matthew. Um, if you want to turn to your Bibles in uh, Matthew chapter 2. And uh, this is where I left off yesterday, if, you, if you're following along. Okay. Again, Jesus, uh, the historical record of Jesus, Matthew 1. Matthew 2, Jesus was born. Jo uh, Joseph meets the angel. The angel says, call him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. Or Jesus, which means he forgives his people for the for their sins. You're forgiven. Okay, because of Jesus. If you believe and receive him, John chapter 1, you have the power and the privilege to become his child. And it is a privilege to be his child. It's a privilege as, as even the disciples, when they got, um, you know, they got like totally like punished for, for the name of Jesus. He said they, they felt blessed to be worthy of the beating of Jesus. That's how much they honored the Lord. They felt privileged to suffer total persecution physically like beat up I'm not even sure if they get whipped at that point but just it's just crazy how that you know and the Bible says though though you're blessed blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness that, that'll be over in Matthew 5 when we get there but uh so anyway uh, King Herod's all upset in all of Jerusalem because Jesus you know uh, the wise men come and they're like hey where's this Jesus king of the Jews and they're all upset uh, but anyway here we go Verse 7 of Matthew chapter 2. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star appeared. Because the wise men said, hey, we followed his star right over here to Jerusalem. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I can go and worship him too. Uh, here, here, there you go right there. He's, he's, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing right there. He, he's pretending like he's going to go worship Jesus. No, he wants to take Jesus out. Uh, and we're going to see later how upset he gets. Um, but anyway, verse 9, um, Matthew 2. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and there it was, the star they had seen in the east. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were over, overjoyed beyond measure. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And falling to their knees, they worshipped him. All right, so there you go. I didn't even realize, you know, uh, that was even in the text, but fall, I was just talking about falling to your knees before the Lord. You know, he's worthy. He is God. He created heaven and earth and everything in it, everything seen and unseen, okay? I mean, when he came down to earth, he, he, he was reversing everything that, that happened at the fall in Genesis. You know, the kingdom of heaven was, was upon them. There is no sickness, there is no blindness, there is no death, all of that. So when he came, he, he called Lazarus out of the tomb after four years, uh, four days of being in the tomb. He stunk. Boom. Death's no match for Jesus. He's bringing the kingdom of heaven down on earth when he was here. And, and it's still here in us believers. We need to be living. The life of Christ lives in us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the blind would see. He, he, he did all of that. The lady bleeding for 12 years healed. Um, had faith by touching the hem of his garment that she would be healed. You need faith in Jesus Christ. Faith of a mustard seed, you can tell a mountain to move and it'll move. That's not much faith. That's just a little faith. That's the smallest seed there is. That's what Jesus said. So, entering the house, check this out. They saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. They worshipped Christ. All right, these are wise men. Let's hope you're worshiping Christ. Get on your knees, worship him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him the gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. We offer him sacrifices of praise. Okay? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise, the Bible says. With stringed instruments, praise him. You know, with a shout, clap your hands. Um, 
In being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. Okay. So, hey, they worship the Lord. That's awesome. You need to be worshiping the Lord. I need to be worshiping the Lord. He said the stones will cry out if we don't. So let's give him the, the praise due his name. He's an awesome God. All right, God bless you. Thanks.